With us now is Easton Corbin. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Good. You're very talented. Uh, and what I found well, interesting is that you kind of knew what you wanted to be ever since you were a little boy. I did. Uh, that's something that's always resonated with me. It's funny. My grandma always said, it's like, yeah, you always said you were going to sing country music for a living and, and you did it. So here we are. What records did you have playing in your house? You said you were raised by your grandparents, right? Well, I, I mean, I give a lot of credit to my grandparents for raising me and um, I was around them a lot. And so as far as my influences, you know, my, my grandparents, I, I, you know, my grandpa was 92 when he passed away. My grandma was 89. So that tells you how far they go back. And so I was influenced by a wide array of music. I know my grandpa's favorite was Roy Acuff and my grandma oh, loved Bill Monroe, yeah. bluegrass artist. And, you know, so that goes way back. But, you know, also um, just I, 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 you know, I grew up loving Merle Haggard and George Jones and Keith Whitley. So definitely the the more traditional country just has always resonated with me as a kid. But, you know, I always loved Elvis and stuff like that, too, because my dad was a huge Elvis fan. Well, I grew up uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, and I had an old Ventura Pontiac station wagon, and it only, or not station wagon, just a car, and it only had an AM radio. So I was listening to the country station all the time. <laughs> so it was Alabama, and it was Waylon, uh, Waylon Jennings, and it was uh, Willie Nelson, and uh, and I used to sing all the time at the top of my lungs. I'd be at the stoplight, and I'd be the one that would be singing, you know, we always wanted a big two-story house, you know, and I would sing. And <laughs> the other cars would look at me and they'd be like, what is she doing? And, you know, and um, there's something about country music that I feel captures the essence of someone's soul because it's storytelling and it's talking to someone and it's getting, it's, it's, the tr it's like nitty-gritty truth. Right. Oh, yeah. You can't hide your feelings in a country song. It's all about feelings, you know, and you can't hide the truth. You know, you got to it's just everything you are, I think, comes forward. And I think that's why people resonate so much with you. Well, and, that, and that's one of the things that I've always loved about country music. It was it was weird because I, mean, I, mean, I might have been a weird kid growing up, but sadder the song, the better. That's why I love Merle Haggard and George Jones. And because it, it was really, <laughs> you know, country music in general is just about real life and um, it ain't always happy songs. It's also, you know, about sad stuff too. And just, I guess about the human condition, I guess, and, and, and singing about that, because I feel like, you know, people can always, when they can relate to something, it, it, it helps them heal. And, and, uh, you know, they kind of find themselves in that. When you started winning awards and playing, you know, some major gigs, how did, how did that affect you at all? Did it affect you or did you just take it in stride? Like, you know, there's a turning point in someone's journey where all of a sudden, you know, they, they're stepping over the stick and it's like, oh, wow, what was that like? So what was that like for you personally? You know, I think I've always done a pretty good job of, of staying who I am and, and you know, kind of, you know, staying, staying grounded. Uh, you know, I still like the same things I always have. And, uh, but I, I do think it's a, a journey and I think you learn as you go, especially you know, as a performing artist out on the stage, I think you develop that and, and you become better and better the more you do it. Um, so I think it's just a, a, a growing process. So you're still working on your craft? Is that what you're telling me? You're still trying to be the best you? I'm always working on my craft. It, it, you know, it's one of those things that it's never, I think you should, uh, it, it's always a, a growing thing. And how about your fingertips? Are they calloused? They're, they're pretty calloused. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember as a kid you know, growing up, when I first started playing guitar, it was one of those things you had to build your calluses up on your fingers. And, and I would practice probably three or four times a, or three or four hours a day. Um, wow. and, and my fingers would darn sure be sore. But uh, they, they, well, here lately, I don't know. We haven't been able to play, so I've got to build them back up. You know, I know, and I'm sorry for that. But you have a new, you have new songs, you have new material, you have new things that you could celebrate, Dude. and you could bring them right to someone's home. So tell us about that, because that's exciting. Absolutely. You know, even though we haven't been able to, you know, play, uh, uh, you know, live music, that doesn't mean we hadn't been working. And I've been in the studio writing and recording, and we just released a brand new EP called "Didn't Miss a Beat." And um, it's got six songs on it, and I'm so excited. Uh, I think four is uh, songs that nobody's ever heard. So I'm, I'm happy wow. to get those out. And, yeah. That's very exciting. My other question to you is you've worked with some really big names, and 
um, some, you know, maybe not so well-known names, but is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? Like, who do you feel like you'd be like, you know what, that's my friend and um, I appreciate them being in my life? You know, the, the great thing is, is in, in the genre that we're in, you know, you, you, you make friends out there and I've been on a lot of tours and, and I've worked with a lot of folks and, and probably one of the guys that's really had my back in this whole thing is my producer, Wade Kirby. He's, he's always been a believer and, uh, through thick and thin and, and, you know, he's, he just believes in me, you know, and, and it's always great to have those people. Now, I'm just going to look at this card for a second because I don't want to miss anything, but um, didn't talk about didn't miss a beat, right? Don't want to miss anything. So um, didn't miss a beat is streaming now. Uh, your 2020 tour was planned, but sadly it had to be canceled. Um, you have won several American country awards. Now, we were just talking about awards in general, but like at that moment, right, when they say your name, you feel what? You feel, do you like did they really say my name? Like, how, how does that like connect with you? You know, I think you definitely feel a sense of accomplishment and then I just winning the award, but you know, also being nominated is an honor, you know, that it is an honor. Uh, it, it, absolutely that, uh, you know, you, you kind of made it somewhere and, uh, it's just kind of a confirmation of that. Um, so it's a very, 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 uh, big honor. And I'm going to ask you another question that's kind of sensitive. Growing up, right, it costs money to like go to a concert or be able to do something special. And um, what's one childhood memory that you cherish dearly to yourself? You know, it, it's probably not just one, but probably the time that, you know, especially my grandparents are very special to me. And like I said, even though, you know, my parents raised me, I give my grandparents a lot of credit for, for raising me. And, you know, probably probably some of the most cherished times is you know when i'd go sit on the arm of the couch and and you know play those songs for my grandparents and you know when they liked it it just mean, meant the world to me you know their their opinion meant a lot and uh so just probably those times of, of them being proud of me is is a uh is a huge thing i cherish those memories too because you know i, I i'm in the middle of my journey right now right uh, my birthday was in June, and I grew up singing in a patriotic singing group called the Futures of America, where we would sing songs from the 30s to the 70s. We'd do a patriotic finale. And I look back, and I just feel to myself, like, uh, so grateful, you know? And it seems like you're a person that has a lot of gratitude in your journey, too, especially around this time, the holiday times, and, you know, it's been a oh, hard yeah. year for a lot of people, and just counting our blessings and things that matter to us. and. I was excited when I found out that you were going to come on the show because I was like, oh, it, when someone says your name, it has that feeling of joy, you know, it's just like, oh, I was like, ooh, yeah. So I just want you to know that you're really impacting people through your music. You're doing a really good job, you know. And, yeah, thank uh, you so much. And it's, it's, been a, it's been a great journey out there, you know, from my first number one song, a little more country than that, to, to all the way now to didn't miss a beat. Um, it, it's been an incredible journey. And uh, just so thankful for it. Now, you were saying that there's four songs on there that people haven't really heard yet. Um, yeah. What's the first line of one of them? You don't have to sing it unless oh you want gosh, to. Oh, my gosh. But... You're on the spot now. Uh, I know we said that it was over, but we promised we'd still be friends. I know you wanted us to call each other and check in every now and then. A little song called Old Lovers Don't Make Good Friends. I had to think about <laughs> well, that. Some... <laughs> Sometimes they do, unless unless your uh, old lovers, new lovers on Facebook, and they get mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, social media tends to go much around from that one. Yeah, it tends to do that. It tends to do so. But uh, yeah, I agree with you, especially around the holidays. It's nothing wrong with uh, maybe checking in on somebody you once loved. So happy journeys to you. It was just such a pleasure to speak with you today, and I wish you all the best. Hey, Donna, thank you so much for having me. Okay, be well. Bye-bye.